Hey everyone, this is Stan Pye, and today I am very, very lucky to have a special guest. Uh, some of you know him as Mick Lauer, uh, some of you might know him as Rice Pirate, but whatever you know him as, I think you can unanimously agree it's synonymous with awesome. So we're going to go ahead and get right into this. Uh, Mick, I like to do this, I like to let you talk about who you are, what you're doing, so that's my first question for you in this little interview. Uh, in your own words, who are you? What do you do? Such a such a philosophical question yeah um uh mick <laughs> also known as i guess rice pirate online um i am a creator i make things i know it's really generic but my life has kind of just been a whole mixed bag of stuff you know i was doing graphic design web design uh flash animation um voiceover script writing sometimes i make random clothes uh, I just like to make stuff. I like to, I like to create stuff. Awesome. So a lot of what we're going to be talking about today is one of those things that you are creating. And it's a little project called Blood Sun Vendetta. So I guess leading in with that, what is Blood Sun Vendetta? Uh, it's a motion comic, uh, based in the JoJo universe. It takes place in 1999, uh, during the events of Diamond is Unbreakable in Mexico. Uh, pretty much across all of Mexico. Um, it features the bastard son of Whole Horse, a character, Jose Hijo de Caballo, uh, Jose, son of the horse. Mm -hmm. And um, kind of, he meets a, a group of misfits along his journey to revenge. He hears about his father being back in Mexico, and so he wants to kill him for reasons. Um, it's your typical revenge story on the surface, and then obviously by the end, it's kind of on par with other JoJo stories, world-ending or world-altering finales, basically, sure. uh, except for maybe part four. Um, but yeah, it's uh, that's pretty much all of it in a nutshell. I will say though, it started out as a whole horse story okay. initially, just because I was a fan of whole horse, well, rightfully and, so, and <laughs> yeah, and so was Iraqi, and. Um, I think he spared him for a reason. You yeah, know, in absolutely. the events of Egypt. You know, very specifically, shot in the face three times, didn't die. Right. You know, so I was like, okay, <laughs> where's this going to go? You know, uh, I was hoping he'd show up at some Me point too. again. But Me too. Yeah. We got Paul Neroff instead. But um, yeah, so I was kind of curious, you know, where that would go and, and you know, kind of fun fan story to go from there. But I just personally, I didn't feel like it was, it just didn't sit right with me as a fan of the series to then have the hubris mm -hmm. to take up the reins and tell a whole horse story. Right. You know what I mean? He's, He's not, not yours. Character. Yeah. Right. And we, we've been following him. We know him. It just, it didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. um, obviously he is in this story and things do happen. And I hope they're explained in a way that people will come to understand and appreciate. Um, but it just made more sense to me like, okay, well, it's Whole Horse. I don't, I can't do Whole Horse. And I just kind of thought about, like, well, what about his past? Like, what if we did, like, a past story? I was like, well, I'm not going to change his past um, or even assume his past too much. So then I was thinking of, like, his Western motif. Sure. Um, and kind of his womanizing days. We know he is a, a womanizer, especially for younger ladies. And so I figured, you know, it would make sense that with Western motif, he went through Mexico at some point, maybe – met somebody like, as far as i'm concerned the horse could have tons of bastard children yeah it you know makes I mean? sense like, absolutely he could have a lot of kids so um yeah that was and then it just kind of rolled from there wow so i mean that's you know that's i, I think it's very cool that you've chosen that reason both the the whole horse inspiration but also with respect to not taking too many creative liberties it's one of the most important things about showing proper respect to yeah. a series um he, so, so definitely one oh, sorry no no absolutely you go ahead i was gonna say there's definitely one thing there's only a couple of cameos mm -hmm. uh some people come back but they were only minorly featured in the series and when i say some like one or two but there is one character that comes back uh or comes from the, the original series that uh, I am curious 
how fans will react because I do think that, um, you know, people's hearts are in these stories. And, right. and when things happen, they kind of assume, well, that's what happened. So if I change the lore in any way, that's the danger. Because as a fan, right. I'm not, you know, you really got to sell me on that, you know, in order for that to happen. So absolutely. That is going to happen, and we'll see how fans react to it. I hope it's explained in a way that everyone's like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. You know what? I I knew something like that must yeah. have happened uh, rather than what the hell are you doing, dude? You can't. What are you doing? You can't. Do yeah, that. you're making things up at this point. So, yeah, we'll we'll see how people feel. <laughs> sure. No. And um, I, I guess uh, the next question on that, you, you mentioned some of like the character inspirations for why you made this. But but why did you choose to make th why did you pick your specific medium that you're going with on this? And sort of how did you reach those decisions? Has it evolved from maybe like originally uh, a sort of mental fan fiction story turning into something different, eventually turning into a whole motion comic? So, yeah, you know, Um. That's a good question. So, um, I say it started an idea, random idea, and then as I thought more about it, I was like, well, wh how, how do I tell this story? And the truth is, what I've settled on is really just the natural deduction of my own abilities. So, I don't think I'm the strongest writer, you know? Um, I don't think I'm a particularly great animator uh even my art it's you know it works it does you know i can you know it does a thing so for me and even my voice acting like i i think i'm i'm good enough to be a professional but it's not like oh you know i'm gonna blow your face off so the whole thing was kind of like oh i'm kind of good -ish at a lot of things i'm not so good at, like backgrounds but in general i'm goodish at a lot of things and emotion comics seem to be the best way to accommodate all of that. Sure. Um, in, in terms of telling the story in a way I felt did it any kind of justice, you know. Um, so yeah, it, it's uh, it was it was less about like a like oh what's the best way I can tell this story in terms of like the most effective way of sharing it. If anything, it was more what's the way I can. You know? Right, right, right. Um, and so a motion comic works in my in my favor in that, you know, it is kind of moving pieces. Um, it's not like the Iraqi intense, you know, cross-shaded art style. Yeah, yeah. It's still kind of got like a simpler anime-ish style. Um, and then I can kind of cover all the cracks with, you know, some voicing and sound and colors and, you know, movement and stuff like that, even if it's simplified. Right. Um, so it's just something that you can watch, you can listen. It's pleasant. It should be pleasant to hear uh pleasant to watch i don't think it's going to blow anyone's minds in terms of the visuals or, or stuff like that but ultimately it's the story the story is what the goal is right um telling a long form story so it was just what do i have at my fingertips what you know do i and obviously i'm going to learn a lot while i'm doing absolutely get better yeah. and stuff um but that's why i settled on a motion comic very cool. And uh, I have seen episode zero, as I'm sure a number of people have. And if you haven't, it's going to be linked to this on whatever platform this is uploaded to. But, uh, I mean, that alone already set a very positive precedent for, you know, both what you want to achieve, but also as a fan expectation uh, for, you know, stylistic, what you're going to be delivering. I mean, it looked great. And, uh, you know, it, it really, I mean, it's the reason I, I caught wind of what was going on here. Uh, with Blood Sun Vendetta. So, I mean, that's... Sure. Now, yeah, you mentioned, you know, Whole Horse being this integral piece of really the foundation of this story. And, and the next thing I wanted to ask you is about your influences because, you know, you've, you've given a little bit of a brief overview. This is a journey through Mexico, bastard son of Whole Horse uh, wants his revenge. But what are your key influences outside of just JoJo for this production? I mean, honestly... It's a JoJo story set in the JoJo universe. So mm -hmm. I'd say the majority of the influence is going to be from JoJo. Right. Outside of that, um, you know, outside of that, it's it's kind of just a... I think some of them are similar to Iraq. You know how Iraqi would always kind of add bits and pieces of um, popular media into, right. his, into his work. So, like, what was it? The Wheel um, in Part 3? That's Christine. You know what I mean? Or the devil, Ebony Devil, 
um that was chucky right you know and it's just stuff like that there's like twilight zone stuff there's, yeah yeah um there's a there, i think the thing was one of them as well you know like he clearly and he loves horror films as well. oh yeah so, junkie <laughs> right and i do too i i love horror films um but i think uh for me it was kind of like okay well what are other influences that i haven't seen that i would like to see sure um and you know there's cool scientific things we've discovered recently mm -hmm. um you know and then there's like modern media like inception or something like sure that. yeah dreams yeah within dreams within dreams like that would be a neat scenario as well um you know in some ways you can say it lacks a certain amount of creativity because you're just pulling from right. something else but and it isn't all that like you know every every scenario is different but it's it's fun to be able to include yeah other you media incorporate these elements tribute. right yeah absolutely um so i'd say the other influences are pretty much that i mean um it's just other media twilight zone's a huge one for yeah. me um and uh yeah well there's definitely going to be some other like cinematic things there in there as well but also some science related ones um i'd say the song uh the johnny cash song mm -hmm. a boy named sue mm -hmm. have you heard that song i have not recently it's basically about a, a boy whose father names him sue and then abandons him and okay. leaves. and then he spends his whole life being beat up because his name is Sue. Sue and he hates his dad so much that he grows up and he goes hunting him down so he could fucking just say it to, or sorry. I no, go ahead. No, sir? no okay. you're, you're free to go. <laughs> okay. Um, so he hunts him down and in the song, he finally comes up at a bar and they can this, and he has an altercation with them. They get this big fight. They're like, they break through the window. They're in the mud. It's raining. There's blood everywhere. And, uh, basically, he wants to kill his dad, but then his dad is like, you know what? Good for you. You kicked my ass. This is exactly why I named you Sue. I knew it would make you tough. I knew the world wouldn't treat you right. Hmm. And that's what you need to become, you know, who you are. Yeah. And it's a pretty shitty dad thing to do. Sure. No, but it's. But, <laughs> yeah. But I, I think that song definitely was kind of, you know. Let's think of the Western motif and Johnny. Absolutely, yeah. Well, and I yeah. think that's really awesome that you have a specific song to draw on. Yeah, yeah. that's so but cool. And that's just the surface. That's right, just right, the right. Surface story it can't just be that. No, yeah, there's you got other things going room. on. Yeah. Well, I mean, and yeah. even JoJo itself. I mean, people say you know, "Get Back" by the Beatles. You know, is like yeah. kind of like one of those foundational songs for what JoJo is. And and there's yeah. always there's room for debate. You know, because it it deviates enough from an ambiguous subject, so that's very right. cool, man. And and I mean, you mentioned me westerns a bit. I mean, is there is there a particular type of spaghetti western? I mean, Whole Horse himself is, you know, that yeah. incarnate. So I mean, is there is there one that yeah. that really like that's that's your favorite or that has the biggest appeal to you as you're making this or a trilogy or any kind of like that? You know, I mean, I'm a fan of them. Uh, what was it, Three Ten to Yuma or whatever it was called? Uh -huh. um, and then, you know, True Grit, the original and the remake. Right. Um, yeah, I, uh, Wyatt Earp and Tombstone. And, you know, I, I enjoy I enjoy that era. I don't think there's any particular film that really uh, that really is like my favorite, you know. Sure. Like, I don't have like a favorite Western, um, but I do enjoy mm -hmm. a lot of them. Right on, man. So, I mean, that's, yeah. you know, it, it's interesting because especially with, with it being where it is, you know, you'd think the Western influence would be stronger, but in, it's, yeah. it's really more so these other things, you know, the science and the horror. And I, I think that's just a, that's, yeah. if anything, you're more faithful to Jojo than you might give yourself credit for in, in doing that. So <laughs> You know what? I'll tell you my favorite Western, buddy. You know what it is? Tell me. Steel Ball Run. Ah, uh, there I you know. go. Good answer. <laughs> Good answer. I'm not going to lie, actually, if that was, oh, man, if that was animated or, oh, I mean, did anything with that, that would be my favorite Western. It yeah. Well, and, I mean, yeah. you could watch Hidalgo. That's like 50% steel ball run right there. Okay. You know, Hidalgo is yeah. a horse race across a long stretch of land. Very similar vibe, but it's a man by himself. I, I, I okay. kept getting vibes of steel ball run or Hidalgo while yeah. reading steel ball run. So it's one of those kind of scenarios. But, I mean, uh, let's be honest. <laughs> in terms of vibes. If you've read enough JoJo, 
everything gives you JoJo. Vibes. It's true. It's it's inescapable. Everything. I can't watch anything without thinking, oh, is that a JoJo? Yeah. That a JoJo? You fell for that. Yeah. You fell into that meme. That meme exists for a reason. Like that. It that, does. You know. <laughs> it does. And you don't know. You don't know if a Rocky was influenced by that thing or vice versa. Yeah. You know, because he's been working for so long at this point. Yeah. You know. All you can hope for is like, well, does it tie in? Time wise, yeah. like, like like who made it first? You know, yeah, okay. Who made it first? He wrote this part in the eighties, so yeah. so Mad yeah, Max you gotta Google and, it. <laughs> and, and and Castlevania. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah, it's definitely one of those things. So I mean, and and I guess on that note, I mean, how long? When did you've mentioned this a bit before? But I guess just for those watching who haven't seen, you know, your your talks about you and JoJo. When did you start your connection with JoJo? How long have you been into JoJo? Um, I would say uh, I started pretty early. So in around the mid to late 80s 1980s is when i was introduced to it when i first kind of saw it on the shelf um i was i remember glancing at it and just being like this isn't dragon ball this is you know i don't, I don't really care um but then by the ni- early 90s i'd say you know like 92 um i was a little bit older and i got back into it and quite a bit had changed by that point so it was pretty much from there it was pretty much from 1990 ish to now so about 30 years wow so yeah you're you're carrying almost as long as the series itself that's a a very (laughs) rare achievement for anybody who is uh, of any kind of western background so well i was born just a few years before the the thing started so yeah yeah it's you you had the justification to be able to do it you know i'm i was born in the 90s myself so my limit but even then i didn't really get into jojo until like post 2010s that's when i was introduced to it you yep. know, and it's yep. just, it's just whenever you happen to land on that, you know, lucky free parking, that is JoJo. <laughs> you know, it really, it's one of those things where I, for the longest time, I kind of, I don't want to say preach the gospel of JoJo, but mm-hmm. I, I definitely talked about it um, to my friends. Right. Uh, and I traveled a lot. And so in Asia, a few more people knew about it. Right. Um, but as soon as I came back to the States uh, at the, around like 1998, um, no, nah, there, there wasn't a single human being. Right. I, you know, I wasn't really into anime at the time either. I had a ton of manga. What was anime really... at that time? You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, devil man and whatever, you know, there was, there yeah. was some good stuff. It was just, there. it wasn't Michael black was out. <laughs> <laughs> My friend showed me that and I was like, wow, this world, this is a lot world. of creativity out there. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, yeah right. a lot of free license yeah. man yeah so <laughs> cool well th- there's that and and you know you mentioned doing graphic design things like that leading into where you are now um yeah. I-, I guess you know now that you're doing this and you're doing voiceover and things like what were you doing you know beforehand because you've had a bit of an interesting journey through your professional career in general like you- you've moved around a bit so can you kind of give us a little overview of of what you've done along the way and how it led to little things here and there, you know, your bizarre yeah. adventure. Let's hear about it. I'll, I'll try to, I'll try to make it not boring. Okay. Um, born in Seattle, uh, lived there eight years, moved to Taiwan, four years, moved to Malaysia for four years, moved to Japan for one year, came back to Seattle for kind of a year, finished high school. Then I moved to New York and I was in New York going to NYU for acting, acting school. Uh, um, graduated from there, but then I stayed for another eight years. And during that time, after I graduated, I kind of quickly learned that what I thought acting was wasn't what it was. Um, and I think a lot of people realize that when the, when they get or or when they get exposure to the industry rather than right. the idea of the industry, um, I found that it 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 wasn't so much about storytelling and um, sharing i did and and i'm not saying that doesn't exist i'm it did exist in small pockets but overall my experience with film and stage acting was just kind of like everyone's hunting for an agent um everyone's you know just trying to get a good review it's Mm -hmm. so much less about the full production in the cast and it is about each individual right trying to showcase themselves and i didn't i didn't really feel that you know, yeah. it's like, why? I don't, I don't really care about this to do that. Um, so while I was auditioning, I took up graphic design. I would use the uh, computer lab at the school and I would basically be riding subways in New York City and I'd see ads and I'd say, that ad's shit. Mm-hmm. Can, can I do better? 
Right. And so I would make my own versions of ads and maybe their shit. If I look back at it and be like, ugh, can't believe I made that. Um, but it was something that I was practicing. Right. Uh, and then I started doing postcards and stuff and posters for different productions off, off Broadway and for NYU. And uh, slowly kind of built up a few clients here and there. Uh, and then a company kind of hired me on to do stuff. And then they asked me if I made websites and I was like, eh, and they said, we'll pay you $500. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> so then I was like, yes, of course, uh, of course websites. I do websites. Yeah. Here's a website. Yeah. Um, so I didn't know how to make websites and graphically it looked fine, but functionally it sucked. Right, right. <laughs> so then I went to Mexico for like a week and I brought a book and my laptop and I, and I learned basic website using kind of updated uh updated we're using css3 and, and uh as opposed to tables and stuff like this is all boring uh, anyway, i'm very so interested honestly <laughs> <laughs> okay so oh, I, I came back and i was like all right i'm gonna start building you better websites so then i worked with this company it was a very small company um in fact i worked in their basement for a while <laughs> and uh i was also at the same time <laughs> auditioning and also a waiter Right. Uh, at ESPN Zone. And then finally, I was making enough money doing the graphic design that I was like, you know what? I'm not going to wait her anymore. I'm just going to do graphic design. I did that for about a year. And then I was, I kind of had enough clients and was doing my own thing to the point where I felt comfortable going on my own. Sure. It was a risk. Um, I still did some work with that company just on the side. But then, um, yeah, then it just kind of, you know, just slowly, slowly but surely, you know, it, you're, you're eating ramen and eggs and, drinking a lot of water for a while, you know, sharing an apartment with, you know, a number of people for a while until finally, you know, things start picking up. Um, and then I got married and it all went down. It, no. uh, <laughs> then I got married. Um, and then, uh, what happened was we started a company basically. Hmm. Uh, it was a graphic design company that also did web stuff. Sure. And, um, through a series of events, I ended up designing a site for a voiceover company. And as payment, they initially said that they would train me, give me demos, and I could use their facilities, you know, and awesome. they'd let me know about auditions and stuff like that. Um, and I was like, cool. All right. I, I mean, yeah, okay. I, I guess it sounds all right. And then my teacher, um, the voice of... Yu-Gi-Oh. Do you know Dan Green? I've Jason heard I, I've heard him many years. Man. Amazing man, amazing human teacher, voice actor, everything about the guy. Yeah, just straight up amazing. Um, so I was blessed to have him uh, on my journey, and uh, after I worked with them for a while, uh, the lessons quite weren't quite paying it so they they started paying me pretty much all the time so i had a decent that's kind of how i got into vo at sure. that time um was web design who would who right would right web design was how that I was my ticket over. yeah i'll design a website <laughs> it really was um and then uh yeah and then we moved to minnesota where there was neither yeah that sounds any, like there was nothing, there <laughs> it's, was nothing. it's like you just Look, kill, killed your client base <laughs> i'm sure minnesota is has stuff i was there for three years and i know there's creative people i know they have a wonderful theater scene absolutely phenomenal great musical theater as well um but you know compared to new york it just doesn't have yeah, you know just... the same opportunities so uh yeah uh then i split with my wife and went to philly i was in philadelphia for two years and i was living with some of the new grounds guys um and i was you know, I was working with some older clients that I had and uh, still doing kind of indie voicing stuff. I'd use the new booth that they had there. And uh, shortly after that, a friend of mine, Joshua Tomar. Yeah, Tomamoto. Very good. Yeah, Tomamoto. Yeah, also, Xander Mobists. I don't know yeah. if you know Xander Mobists. Of course! Yeah. <laughs> Everyone knows the Smash yes. announcer, man. Come on. <laughs> Smash and Persona as well. Yeah, yeah. He does a ton of stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's been active lately. Both of those guys, very good friends. Um... <laughs> And they were like, dude, if you want to get into voiceover, you got to, you got to get out. You mm. got to come to LA. You got to come to Burbank specifically. Yeah. And they also knew that one of my, I had three dreams at the time. One was to do a FromSoft game. One was to voice in JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. Mm -hmm. And then one was to do like a syndicated children. 
That's awesome. And so, yeah, that no. And so I, I took their advice and I packed up everything I had and I drove from Philly to Burbank and, uh, yeah, things have been, things have been great. Then I was in Jojo the end. <laughs> yeah, you did it. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, and how did that lead to so like blood sun vendetta happened somewhere in between all that <laughs> it ha- yeah, well it happened while i was here so i've been in la for three years and all three of those goals did happen which is great because there was sekiro mm. uh, jojo and then the lego show on nick so i had to come up with a fourth goal and that was um to pay my bills sure with voicing so i can afford to make blood sun vendetta there you go and there you go that's awesome, man. So, and and I guess then that really does tie into something else I wanted to ask about, which is your connection to Newgrounds, uh, mm-hmm. which I guess you know you just touched on a little bit, and obviously it's it's had some significant place in your life. Uh, first off, in your words, what is Newgrounds? Because I always I, I like to be a, sort of a, an ambassador for Newgrounds, being the way the internet's always changing. We got to have places yeah. that are still home. So I, I'd, yeah. I'd love for you to just give your spin on what Newgrounds was, is, and, and it's, it's your involvement and how it's helped you in life or your connection to it in life. Um, cool. First of all, I'm just going to say I'm blinking a lot because I'm wearing a contact and for some reason it's drying out my eyes. So I can, I've been blinking a lot just <laughs> in case anyone's like, is he trying to, sa- am I trying to do Morse code? Yeah, like, yeah. save me? I've been taking notes. I, th- I thought we had a co- <laughs> communication set up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was I was queuing you for the next question. Right. <laughs> um, so Newgrounds, uh, Newgrounds came around the time that I was <laughs> doing stuff uh, voiceover in, in New York. So what had happened was I stumbled across some of the videos. Um, you know, here I am. I'm a graphic designer, a web designer, but I really want to. I'm not really feeling like I'm exploring my creative stuff, and so. Uh, you know, I go on YouTube and I see Ego Raptor or something. Sure. You yeah. know, and it's like, oh my God, this is one dude. And even if it's not the most well animated thing, it's like funny. And he's it, doing all these things. It res- yeah, it resonates with me. And you see the credits and it's all him. Yeah. And I'm like, what? That's crazy. So then he was mentioning Newgrounds at the time uh, when he was posting the YouTube videos. Right. And so I went to Newgrounds and I realized it was full of people like that. Yeah. You know? I mean, there was just so many of these content creators that were versed in so many different things. And maybe they weren't amazing at it. Maybe they weren't even good at some of it, but they were making <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. this was a whole site of people who made shit. They could be out drinking. They could be out doing drugs. They could, you know, <laughs> watching the game or vandalizing shit, even though some people would probably say that some of the content created on Newgrounds was akin to vandalism. Right. It was for your like senses. Creative. Yeah. Creative vandalism. It was an That's assault on the senses. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I, I saw this community of people and I was just blown <laughs> away and I was immediately inspired. Like immediately. Like yeah. that day I went through the whole site. I mean, not the whole site, but there's way too much content. You went through the whole I, front page. <laughs> yeah. I went through the whole front page for sure. Um, and I was like, man, this is just so cool. There's music people and there's voice actors and there's animators and game creators. And it was just so cool. So that's when I joined and I joined, I think like most people do is more of a voyeur, you know, yeah, I just yeah. went and, and viewed things and rated things, wrote little reviews and stuff. Um, but then I started editing things and it's definitely a different dynamic being someone who just consumes content yeah. versus being someone who creates content. Obviously, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't really have like a YouTube channel of any kind. Um, I hadn't made any animations of any kind. So I, I didn't know that going in and it's brutal, you know, yeah. and a lot of people would say that Newgrounds, especially back then, I don't know. I, I haven't been on as much lately. I still yeah. love Tom and Jeff and, and Corey and Ivan and, and all those guys over there. Um, uh, but he, he, anyways, back then it was a lot of people were very active <laughs> and there was an attitude. There was a oh, real yeah. attitude about you, you it. You cut your teeth and, on there. <laughs> oh yeah. People were flexing on each other. Yeah. If you made an anime, you, instead of like a, like a rap battle, or <laughs> yeah. like, you know, like a call out rap, <laughs> you make a call out animations. animations. <laughs> you know? Oh yeah. yeah. You would totally do that. And some of them, you know, some of them I think were 
mean spirit and didn't quite have the uh didn't have most the, of them uh, were <laughs> yeah yeah it, it didn't feel like a friendly banter it no felt more like an attack yeah this is war <laughs> yeah it was war um but i think a lot of things were learned especially for me because i came yeah. into it late i joined newgrounds when i was 30 you know a lot of these guys they started in their teens so i felt like i was a little bit more emotionally mentally prepared right yeah you had the maturity stuff. that was needed but I didn't. I mean, <laughs> the I, emotional maturity. Yeah, because it's such a different. It was such a different. Uh, it was such a different experience to get criticism or to yeah. get blowback or to have people tell you your shit. Like yeah. what the you know f is this? Get this off the site. You know stuff like that. That even as an adult, I, you know I've gone through things, but I was just like, ow, that hurt. Because <laughs> yeah. you know I I put time into this. I made this mm -hmm. thing. But rather than getting dissuaded, it was like okay. All right, I'll try again. How do I make it better? And then you try again, and you get blammed. And then you try again, <laughs> and you get blammed. Blammed. You know, I I probably made like four or five animations that never made it to. Never got the, onto the portal. You know, yeah, through the portal. Um, I even had artwork that didn't make it through. You know, like it was just, you know, that's how it was when yeah. you started. But I definitely feel like um, the hyper criticism that was there, if you could survive it. Um, I know we live in an anti-bullying age, but, you know, my mom, you know, she beat me with a metal ruler once. Uh, she used to pinch me a lot. I know my mom used to get, like, the hand from my grandma because mm -hmm. I'm Chinese. Yeah. So it's like... <laughs> Naturally. Yeah. I hear, yeah, I hear about some of the complaints. I'm just like, oh, man. You, I get bullying is bad, but sometimes that isn't bullying. Sometimes it's just someone hurt your feelings. See, this, is, this is why I named you Sue. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I named you Sue. Exactly. So you could grow up. No. And again, I, I, I think there is malicious uh, attacks and bullying and that obviously it's never cool. That's yeah. when you step up and you're like, dude, just stop fucking stop. Or yeah. I'm gonna, or I'm going to beat your ass. Right. Um, and then continue the cycle. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, I felt like, wow, it, I do think Newgrounds was more bullying. I think there was <laughs> bullying on Newgrounds, yeah. but I do think that a lot of people came away from that a lot more prepared for YouTube because yeah. I know a lot of people who ended up doing other things in their lives. I'm not saying like, oh, the natural progression from Newgrounds is YouTube. Unfortunately for money, that kind of was Yeah, the it case. was a necessity for a lot of people. It, it was a necessity for some people. Um, just the views and, and like Google and the just revenue. has the exposure. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, but yeah, the, the people that, that were forged in that right. fire, <laughs> um, a lot of them came out like pretty much ready for any YouTube comment and throw their way. Yeah. Um, not all, not all of them, but yeah. I, I definitely think some, and then if anything, you were just more prepared and like me, I love reading comments and I think it's yeah, mainly it's, because it's of my favorite rounds. thing. Yeah. When I voiced Abakio, oh man, oh man, I would type in. Twitter or on Twitter, I type in Abakio dub or like Abakio VA. Oh man. Oh, it was juicy. <laughs> and I get it. Like anime fans, as I am an anime fan, um, especially ones that lean towards subs rather than dubs, which is also me. They're particular yeah. about stuff. I've been on that side. You know, I've heard voices where I was like, eh, eh. <laughs> I certainly have never said, I want this person to buried and in the <laughs> ground um th there were a number of juicy just diamonds oh yeah. diamonds unbreakable but then but then on the other side you know there's the people that are really positive yeah you know and that are really happy and i think it's important and healthy to be able to take the criticism and you know in some cases you know they're like oh the voice isn't low enough and in my head i was like yeah yeah <laughs> you know sure that's a fair criticism i mean if in terms of what I naturally would have heard as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that... But does that mean it can't be its own thing? No, of course it can be its own. It's a dub. It's never going right. to be exact translation, of, you know, from one to the other. Uh, but, yeah, I would say, sorry, to round it back, <laughs> um, Newgrounds is still very much in my heart. I think it taught me and inspired me in so many ways. Um and uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm ever grateful for it. I know a lot of people are. You know, the list goes on. Yeah, the people that came out of Newgrounds, like alumni, the list is huge. 
And even the people you don't know who are on Newgrounds were very involved or aware of Newgrounds. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm talking, you know, big, big TV show people right now. Yeah, I, I gotta say, like, even I did a, a workshop with Crispin Freeman, and he, you know, at the end, mm -hmm. was he mentioned Newgrounds still as a place okay. for, for yeah, people. Yeah. And I thought that was just so That's cool. Awesome. Yeah. No, this was like he's sometime cool. last year. He's a cool guy. Yeah. Um, but he, he mentioned, mentioned it. it last year. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You should tell Tom. Tell Tom Fulp. He would love I, that. I actually, I tweeted it <laughs> when oh, it okay. happened, like right after. I was like, this is awesome. Did yeah. you add Tom? At uh, Tom I added Fulp, Newgrounds. He yeah. <laughs> he, loves, he loves that shit, man. He, yeah. He's it still, was... Newgrounds is still his baby, man. It, it's still a great place to go. I mean, there's still a lot of, a lot of heart there. Yeah. You know, and and a lot of material that's banned on Tumblr now. But I mean, it's there's a lot of material on Newgrounds <laughs> that's right. all around, that's and right. and it's a living yeah. history. I, I think that's another cool thing is everything's chronologically yep. well documented. So it's a real living history of like the internet. I mean, like Numa Numa and stuff. Yeah. Newgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it? One you think of those about things. it. Like all those just all that stuff like Donkey and Harry <laughs> Partridge and yeah. Oni. Zach and and Egoraptor and it just it, it just goes on and on and on and on and on. Even uh, Soldier Boy, he had an account. <laughs> he he made stuff for Newgrounds. It's just how to you live, know? and it's good yeah, for man. for all mediums. So that's yeah. that's awesome. And then uh, shout outs to everybody uh, on the new uh, NG crew, and of course to those of you who are looking for a place to start doing content. Look at Newgrounds. It's always a good home to be at, uh, even today. Yeah. So um, I guess rounding that out, you mentioned when, you know, after you did the dub, looking for those comments, I, one of the big things, right, because this was one of your goals, one of your your big dreams for your life was to be in an official yeah. JoJo production. Uh, how yeah. has that changed your perception uh, in general? Like, we'll start with first just in your life, like you, you made it into JoJo. What is that like for you? <clears throat> awesome <laughs> yeah. i mean it's a dream come true you know it's uh it is it was one of my goals and it, it's still kind of surreal that um i'm a part of it and even even as a dub va you know um because that's how anyone you know listening to it in english right. is gonna hear it from here on out um so yeah i mean as far as my life perception i don't mm. i don't think that's changed too much. you know what i'll say this um it was very vindicating mm -hmm. of my choices where i you know i, I was in an environment where <clears throat> i was told that what i was doing was a not going to be profitable b probably not possible right and c um kind of just immature <laughs> you know uh, it wasn't raising a family you know, it wasn't running a business. It was wanting to be characters. Yeah. And um, I I understand the value of all of those things. I don't think that's in my blood. That's not yeah. my dream when I think of what I want to do with my life. And I, when I had my divorce, we, we had a very frank conversation at the end where uh, she asked, you know, if you had to choose between you know, making money and having a family and being creative and making stuff, which one would you choose? And my initial reaction was, I don't think they're mutually exclusive. Sure. But if they were, I choose making stuff. Yeah. And that may, ch that might change. You know, I yeah, might yeah. come 60 and be like, Oh man, I'm too old to have a kid. Shit. <laughs> uh, but for now I couldn't imagine being happy running a business you know, with my wife in a house and not being able to um, create. Right, that's self-actualization. That had to be. Yeah, I don't think that would have been healthy for anybody. Mm -hmm. um, that wasn't why we got a divorce, by the way. No, but it's just but something that, that was That was well. just kind of like, that was so we could kind of like walk away and be like, okay, we should have checked in with each other a while. Yeah, ago. reconciling who like we really are. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other other stuff happened before that, but that was a nice. That was kind of a nice way for me to walk away and go. Yeah, if I could go back, would I change anything? I would hope certain things didn't happen the way they did, but no, I, I do think it was the right choice. This is your life. I could be honest about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, so I guess, just in general, with Blood Sun Vendetta. Now, now you've you've been working on this project, but then you also have this official JoJo experience, and of course, I mean it's the yeah. dub, but it's still like 
it's it's this official production and how is that yeah. how has that influenced your perception of as as you're working on Blood Sun Vendetta and has it had any impact on how you're approaching your production for it um i don't think it's changing how i'm approaching it i i think what what might happen is that if um blood sun does well i think a lot of people will kind of retroactively try to associate me being in the series with Blood Sun Vendetta, like me being in part five and, and me creating Blood Sun Vendetta, when in fact they're very separate. Right. I was making Blood Sun Vendetta well, I've been doing it for two years, right. you know, when I went to Mexico and, and uh, all this other stuff. So I've been working on it for a while and, you know, the JoJo thing happened, you know, later. Right. And they were not connected. Somebody even asked me. They were like, "Hey, did you get cast in JoJo because of the stuff you're doing with Blood Sun?" No, they don't. They don't they That's don't not even the kind of thing you really would show them. Yeah. No, yeah. not only that, they probably work against me. Right, in some ways. right. Yeah. Um, so no, I, I don't think, I don't think anything changed for me. I was always going to make Blood Sun. As soon as I, dude, I was two years in. I'm on my third now. I'm going to make this. Right. You, you're committed. Um, I'm committed <laughs> at this point. Uh, I've made too many promises, and that was very intentional. Um, and as far as my involvement with uh, the series in, in part five, that's just icing on the cake. Right. I mean, it's a dream come true. But in terms of my the influence it has on my project, it's just icing on the cake right. as far as Blood, Sun, Vendetta is concerned. Because I think later, hopefully, I w- hopefully if Blood, Sun, Vendetta is appreciated by people, it won't be a bad association to make. Right. Right, it'll be, you know, hey, look at that that perfectly... Well, he was the right guy for the job, you know? That something like that. Yeah, That's yeah. what I'm going to hope it, people right. will say. I mean, I, well, I think at this point, you know, there's really no questioning your legitimacy as a JoJo fan. I mean, you, you've established it for your whole life. So, yeah. You yeah. Know, it's like, now it's execution. I need to be able to watch this thing and be like, yeah. I did, I, yeah. As a fan, I'm down with I this. did it justice. So, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Then so and that Mexico trip, you know, it keeps coming back because I guess it was obviously it was you made a video about this as well, talking about the the trip's relation to you. Is this a production related experience? You know, going to the place, seeing it because you you're gonna make a series about it. You better be there and actually know yeah. what you're talking about. Uh, what yeah. was that experience like for you, both as a tourist and as as somebody going to gather research? Loved it. Um, you know, I've traveled a lot when I moved, obviously, right. but when I was living in Taiwan, when I was living in Japan, there were always like these little trips my family would take me on. Mm. And we'd go to, you know, Thailand or Mount Konikina Balu or, you know, whatever. We'd go to all these different places. But as a teenager, I just didn't give a shit. Right. I want I wanted to play Final Fantasy. You know, I wanted to I wanted to drink with my friends because I was drinking at that age. Um I I could give a rip about you know, cool geography or history or any of these things. Right. And even now I'm not like the most like intrigued kind of, I'm not always like thirsty for knowledge. I am Mm. actually, that's a lie. Now I am. I wasn't before because now I'm just like, how do I use this? in Right. You need it. (laughs) Yeah. It's functional. That trip, that trip was just, it was eight days. Um, We were, you know, up at three in the morning and driving, you know, eight hours a day, just, And everywhere I went, I took every photo I could, thousands of photos. I asked every question I could about every location we were at. And I was, and I, I fell in love with that. Like that was just when I, when you go somewhere with a purpose to learn about that area, it's amazing. Like the things that like we were in, um, we were in real day Catorce and our, our guide Juan First, we had to ride horses just to get to um, this separate location. The actual town of Rio de Catorce, the Royal 14, you, you drive you drive up this mountain, and then there's this two-kilometer tunnel, one way, or, or one lane tunnel that they dug through the mountain um, to get to this. Two kilometers. So it's like a mile of tunnel or something like that. My metric oh, yeah, I don't know. I'm yeah. an American, so man. Then, <laughs> yeah. So then... Once you're in there, it's like time is backward. Like, you know, you're back in time. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's donkeys here and you can see the old architecture. They had like an old like cockfighting coliseum wow. there. It looks like a normal coliseum, but like scale tiny. of chickens. Yeah. It, it's so <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, some of the some of the buildings were just 
total ruins. Mm -hmm. And then others were kind of rebuilt, but nothing modern. Uh, our hotel didn't have electricity. So we had a lamp that was made out of like grass. Like, I don't even know why they gave us a, a like it was lamp, grass shaped lamp. Um, and uh, they didn't have a water heater either. Mm -hmm. But we took the horses up to uh, Pueblo Fantasma, the, the ghost town. And not only did he try to offer us peyote, um, but I got to ask him just a lot of questions about the area. And that, I think, was the highlight. Because I think anyone for like a small town that's been around a long time, if you ever get a tour guide, ask them anything, everything. Because he'd throw little little tidbits of stories. And then I had my friend, Gerardo, he would he would uh, translate for me. Like, and then he just kind of throw out like, oh, yeah, sometimes people see ghosts here. Yeah. And then just kind of keep going. And I was like, oh, OK, hold on, back up. What happened? Yeah. And then he would he would tell me the story of these tourists who came up and, you know, they were taking photos. And then they saw in one of the photos that there was, you know, this this ghost. And it's the ghost of this little boy that mm -hmm. used to go through the, the mining tunnels and uh 40 years ago or something there was a bunch of miners they got lost and they saw one of them saw a little boy and he like led the miner to this um to, to like this part of the wall where he dug and found like all of this silver uh i was like well why didn't he just save him but okay fine he wanted to help make money. <laughs> yeah uh but yeah no i mean just so many so many stories that it that yeah and also cab drivers cab drivers of like old towns and tour guides they know all the juicy stuff oh they have all the best stories some of them are ridiculous <laughs> at rio de catorce they were talking about this one church where apparently the city's named after the 14 thieves that stole 14 pieces of silver okay now the ta the town was somehow named it was already named rio de catorce at that point and then the priest goes out with a shotgun and hunts all 14 down and collects each silver piece and brings it back to the church. And there it is in the church. You can see all 14 coins. Cool. That's what he told me. <laughs> now, I don't know if that's true or no, not. No, but it's but great that like material. A, that would be such a good JoJo plot. That's, that's an like arc. A, yeah, priest with a shotgun going around. You know, maybe they don't have stands. Maybe they got something else. But they all yeah. you gotta collect each coin from each of the different thieves. Oh, yeah. so they, cool. They, you know, they're fighting with Hamon, so they each have like a pig yep. and, and bacon they throw at each other, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude. And then, you know, it, it's especially those little spiritual supernatural stories are such Jojo bait. I mean, yeah. Have you read Araki's manga theory and practice? Yeah, I have it. So, okay, cool. So, I mean, you already know it, it, like his, his love for the supernatural and things like that and story yeah. structure. Um, but I just, you know, especially talking about going to the place, did that have any influence on your decision? Like, did you, or did, was it something you always knew you needed to go and do? I always knew I had to do Yeah. It. There was no way I could have, cause at the time, it was just a blurry idea. A road trip across Mexico without going to Mexico? This isn't right. a fantasy adventure. I'm going to have real locations, just like he had real locations. Right. And that was also a big part of it, too, because the story of JoJo, both part one and two, starts in Mexico. Yeah. I mean, first, it, yeah, it's just a couple panels with, you know, the Aztecs. And then in part two, they actually go to Mexico yeah. briefly before bouncing off to Italy. But... It's a big part of it's the a world JoJo, of JoJo. Yeah, absolutely. It's why Dio exists. Right. And yet and yet we never really explored a lot of it. Yeah. And I felt like what may have happened, and I could be wrong, um, hopefully I get to ask Araki one day. But I noticed in the later parts, like obviously part three, part four I mean part four is based on uh his his hometown, uh what was it, Sendai or something? Mm. Um but you know, I'm sure it's part part fictional, but then you know, part five, it's Italy. You know, we've got all the the, yeah. the Italian architecture and, and locations, um, but part three specifically. And so, I had a feeling that maybe he hadn't gone to Mexico, or at least he hadn't like really explored Enough. Mexico. Yeah, um, and I think that might have been the reason why it was more because Mexico in the JoJo world is like almost a fantasy. Yeah, it's it's, it's like nebulous. This, yeah, it's just kind yeah. of like you're in Mexico. Mexico yeah. Ooh, where? What is this exotic where? Like, no, where? Mexico. This? Like, yeah. You're in Red and Dead so, Redemption, Mexico. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Procedurally generated Mexico. Right. Um, but yeah, so I I kind of had that feeling that maybe that the reason why it wasn't so specific was because of that. And again, could be wrong. Mm -hmm. 
but I felt like with this one, it was going to have real locations, and the trip was plotted around real locations. Right. Particularly, like, special ones that uh, I, I spoke with some people from Mexico, and they were kind of telling me some really neat places to check out. And so I did, and then I just kind of plotted a course through all of them. Right. and was like, hey, we're going to make this into a store. Let's go. But yeah, I always knew I would have to go, because otherwise, it's just, you know, it's a bunch of photos. Yeah, and, it wouldn't be you know, genuine. That. Yeah, it wouldn't be the, the story. So yeah, and then just on the trip, you learn so much. Like, there's so much space between these places. There's so much empty space, mm. you know, just like I would imagine Steel Ball Run had as well. Right. What happens in those times? Well, you better have some decent character interaction or something. Yeah. Not that you need to show it all. But you need but to establish it's there. it's there, yeah. Right, that time passes and things happen. So, um, yeah, the trip was necessary and definitely changed the course of the whole way I thought about the project. That's awesome, man. How did, how did you find, especially, because this is one of the hardest challenges, with especially a foreign place to you that is also yeah. from a different time period, because now we're 20 years ago. Yeah. Right, so so how have, how have you found that challenge to be met? Well, um, so unfortunately, unlike popular locations in Italy, where you could probably get a photo of the Colosseum from every year, you right. know, or, even, or even 2000 yeah. years ago, if you really needed to, yeah. like, <laughs> um, a lot of the locations that I planned, um, luckily one of them is a fictional village. Not worried about that. Sure. Um, and then, and then uh, the the first major fight it happens on a road, not a problem. They kind of go through. You know, the issue is going to be when I get to like a more modern. See if I get to Mexico City, um, I have a feeling. But even then, I'm focusing more on the Zocalo, which is the the ta- the center mm-hmm. um, of of the city where the church is, and so. That all I feel kind of looks pretty similar. That I do think I could get photos from from 20 years ago. The biggest issue was like I, I was going to add these gas stations because right. they they have you know how there's um, Ausin in JoJo, which is actually Lawson. Right, right, Japan. right. It's you like wanted to have the equivalent. Morio. Yeah, in Morio. So um, yeah, in Mexico they have uh, Oxo, mm-hmm. I believe, um, and I was going to have XOXO. Okay. Um, kind of like my own version of. Oxo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I believe it's OXO, if, if I'm saying it wrong, I'm an idiot. Uh, but anyways, I had to look up when they were created. Right, like, to make sure it existed. When did, yeah. Exactly, because if he's at one of these stations and... But then, out of all of that, the one thing I have to remember is, it's a freaking story. Yeah. And, you know, th- some liberties are... You just gotta have some liberties. You know, I'm not gonna have them whip out an iPhone, obviously. Right, like right. An iPhone X, but... You know, there's some leeway in that it is 20 years ago. And while some people may be like, wait a minute, that gas station wasn't there 20 yeah. years ago. I just got to make sure that I'm not like, you know, hold, hold, you know, buildings like an important building or something. Sure. Like yeah. That, yeah. You know? Well, like, like that. well, I mean, I guess I have to ask, I mean, will we see a beanie baby or a beeper on somebody's person? <laughs> I mean, there is a beeper. <laughs> there we go. There's absolute, there absolutely, absolutely a beeper. There's a beeper in the first stand fight. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's so. Wow, that's a little creepy. Hey, look, mm-hmm. man, I I grew up in the nineties. <laughs> yeah. It's like I understood. Yeah, man. Well, like that's awesome, and that's definitely one of those challenges. Uh, I I always am afraid of, especially looking at anything historical, um, matching it enough, and and because you're not from there, like you don't have that personal experience. Uh, that's kind of like you know the limitations are who spoke to you and what did they tell you. You know, that's yeah. like, and that's an advantage of now with in seven and eight of Jojo having an, yeah. an alternate universe where the rules are yeah. completely free. Yeah. Uh, that's definitely something that gives him a lot of creative liberties. I mean, America yeah. wasn't quite that way during steel ball run. You know, at the end of the day, I was thinking that I was like, if, if for some reason someone's like, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> or like that character that you brought back would never do that. Or, you know, whatever the case may be i'll be like alternate universe there you go like you like this is this is one of this is poochie number 13 universe yeah okay exactly that's that you can write out any excuse that way and you're good yeah a rocky gave us that he gave us a way out that he gave us the apple (laughs) he was so kind take take a bite yeah you have 28 options of universes have fun (laughs) 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. And then, you know, I mean, I live in Florida, so like we all, everybody who lives in a place where there's a JoJo part has like this little bit of local pride, right? Like, yeah, of you course. know, I've got all part six in my backyard. Uh, of course. You know, and, and it's funny because even that question of how well do you know the area when you're writing the story, one of the, I make this joke at my JoJo panel all the time. And it's, you know, they say, they go from the prison to Cape Canaveral, right? And he describes it as like some obscene amount of hours to get from point A to point B. And yeah. everyone who lives in Florida knows that it's not possible that it took that long. But I, I always give the little caveat. Well, you know, we have a road here called I-4 that runs through Orlando. And maybe he was using that because it gets a lot of slowdowns. Maybe that was the, uh, <laughs> that's, there maybe. we go. Rocky knew what was going on. He knows it better than I we do. I do think so. I think what you're saying is what I hope I would experience. If for some <laughs> reason there are some things in Mexico that people are like, that's not so accurate. I would hope that if it's executed well enough, yeah. there would be enough pride for the project. Right. That 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 would override. It would be like, well, I you know we we forgive like you know that it's not exactly <laughs> right because. Uh, we enjoy that it yeah. took place here. Why are there two coffins? Don't worry about it. You know. Yeah, don't worry about <laughs> it, it. You like it. It's don't it's worry fine. About it. yeah. yeah. So I mean, and we we're kind of talking about obstacles a little bit there. That's definitely one of them. What are some other interesting obstacles you're running into or have run into working on Blood Sun Vendetta? I would say the number the number one obstacle would be getting the right help mm. because. Uh, just for the sake of time like yes could i do everything sure would it be as good as if i had people on on my team that were like specifically like that was their skill set right. probably not um but just getting certain people on so i had to read omeep bag for that chapter zero the non-canonical testing and to read omeep bags just amazing I, so, I, yeah i've i've worked with them before for some videos yeah. it's awesome awesome work yeah if you saw some of the stuff i sent him man it, it was like i sent just like stick figures sometimes because like we, we we were working right. and i was like oh man i'm missing i'm missing a shot and i just be like okay how about something like this it's just like a stick figure there you go and then boom fully flushed out yeah beautiful jojo um, art yeah oh so good unfortunately dorito can't join on this project because dorito's got a life yeah and this is going to go on for a long, a long time. time. So I do think, and I have been interviewing some people for cleanup, but I think what I'm realizing is that it might take a little longer at first, but I think what I'm going to do is do the cleanup myself. Yeah. The, the animated sequences, which there are, are sprinkled up throughout. I think I will definitely have somebody do that for me. Could I do it? Yeah. Would it be great? I don't know. Um, but I think I'm going to try to hire people for those specifically yeah. um, because I don't want the style of like the still frames to vary too much. And if I have right. one artist and they can't and they got to bounce, you know, and while I'm doing the boards, I might as well just, you know, just try to flush it out a little right. bit more Man. knowing that I'm the one who then has to go clean it up right. anyway. Um, this board is then, almost the final shot as is. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So why not just do that and then. Uh, rather than have somebody else, you know, have to deal with that. So I think that's what's going to happen is uh, it's in terms of help, though, backgrounds are still going to be a big one. Yeah. Um, voicing. I don't want to voice every character. I certainly don't think I should. I don't. The issue with the voicing is that because it is a personal project and and there is pretty much no budget. The idea of hiring people kind of sucks. because yeah. I You know. At this point, at this point, if the support grows enough, then obviously, I, hell, I'll retroactively pay people if I could. Sure. But, um, you know, with like retakes and, and things like this, any character I can voice, it just makes yeah. more sense that I do. Knock it out. Yeah. Right. So we'll see. We haven't got, you know what? I'm just taking this one step at a time, like as I'm doing it, rather than like, what the hell am I going to do about the? It's just like, you know what? I just got to push through. These are the goals right now. These are the decisions I have to make and you know, worry about things, worry about other things later. Um, and then the other one, the other challenge is the minutia. Yeah. So like even now there's a scene, the very first chapter, we are in the, the Metropolitan Cathedral in, in downtown Mexico City. And there's a shot where the door is locked of the church. 
I have no idea what the locking mechanism of that church Looks is. Like. <laughs> and I have I have looked at every photo online. I have oh, I've looked at virtual tours and like zoomed in like a hundred times into a background and like see the yeah. door. Where's the lock? Like, what is it how does it work? What is it yeah, how does it work? Because it's it's a little bit important. Yeah, you gotta steal the Declaration of Independence, you know? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That. You gotta know. Um, I almost was gonna pay somebody on Twitter to just hey, to go I live in Mexico City. Could you do me a favor? Could you go down to the church? Because the way the doors open is that they go up against the walls when they when they open, and they don't close them until everyone's out. Right. When they leave. So I. You have to be there. So <laughs> currently, this is the very first lib like uh the first uh, uh hurdle. You know, yeah, or well, it, it's the first. What's it called? Liberty that I'm taking. Oh, okay. With with it, I'm just like I I. I and it has to be the lock for it. 20 years ago, not the current one. So that makes exactly. it even more complex. Exactly that. Exactly that. So I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah. Uh, that is not nearly as important as moving on. You, you gotta know, know when to let it go. So many things. Yeah. 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 And, and I guess uh, yeah. you've, you've mentioned a few, but like, what are some, are any things that you want to like reach out now and say like, Hey, I could use help in this thing or that thing, like off the top of backgrounds, your head. Backgrounds, backgrounds is the big one. Um, yeah. And you know, I, I felt like I was offering a, a very, uh, reasonable rate. Um, it, it's not even that I just haven't even reached out to all the people. I reached out to right. one person and I just don't know if it's their cup of tea. Right. It's really, you really got to find like the right mix of things. Cause you know, you want somebody who's fast and efficient and good. Yeah. And I'm willing to pay for that. Um, the issue then becomes, you know, a lot of those people are busy. Right, they right. They, you know, they already, already have clients, stuff. yeah. Yeah. So, and, and then also at the end of the day, knowing that I'm going to be working on this project for so long, is this something that another artist could do? If I right. Can they commit? Do they have a, a, right. you know, a backup if necessary? That's definitely. Either commit or be able to, yeah, have a backup. So. You know, it's not like an anime season where you have a team and it's like, right. all right, this is the team, and then boom, here we go. We're gonna knock out this production with these people. For me, this is an ongoing thing. You right. Know, this is. I have no idea how long this is gonna go. So the commitment, it's it's hard for anyone. It's to hard to in. lock in forever. Yeah. No, that's yeah. um, and and I mean, and you're also doing your other stuff while you're still doing this. I mean, not just voice, but I mean, you're still doing art. Uh, and I remember you put out the White Snake art, and mm -hmm. one, I loved it, but two. Um, you know, that the level of just like spending the time going through the, you know, all the details on the skin pattern for white snake are just so elaborate and like, wow, oh. you were saying like Iraqi really did this in every panel, you yeah. know, <laughs> that is incredible. Unless, unless, and I, I know he still hand draws his pages. Yeah. So I'm just curious if he had somebody else just like add some of that stuff. I don't think he did. I think he did. I feel like I that's a very did. Iraqi thing to commit to. Man, that is just, yeah, he's just nuts, man. That's yeah. so cool. It really is. Like, it, 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 you always have to, like, pull yourself back in while you're working on this other stuff and, like, remind, whether it's Blood, Sun, Vendetta or anything else you're working on, like, man, Iraqi did this really awesome thing. Like, and this just reminds or points it out to me. I, like, yeah. one of my favorite parts of the JoJo panels is always, by the way, here, it's, it's the last section. It's, why does JoJo matter? Oh, hey, look, only Osama Tezuka's had a, had the same honor in this in this museum as as iraqi so that kind of thing yeah. you know it's, <laughs> it's i mean he's been doing it for so long yeah at this the, point. the paralympics he's still, yeah see, like, I mean, he's just yeah i saw that it's that, so beautiful i love it yeah yeah, for, yeah i guess not context doing stuff for gucci yeah, right right doing stuff for gucci he's doing stuff for the olympics so. yeah it's yeah. it's really awesome well we we've talked about a lot of stuff today uh, i i guess the the key takeaway now is where can people learn more about you about what you're working on about blood sun vendetta uh let's start with that <laughs> there's a couple of places uh ricepirate.com uh has a basic overview of some stuff I, it's a little bit out of date so i gotta update that soon um and then uh the patreon obviously has a lot of updates um, pretty much monthly, just kind of progress reports and, and keeping people posted. And that I think is just Patreon Rice Pirate. I, yeah. Some people made some fake accounts. I have like a JoJo banner. You'll you'll you'll, you'll know it's you. <laughs> um, and then uh, my Twitter, I post. You've probably seen. I post a lot of just random stuff. You know, even just line tests. You know, yeah. or shading tests. Just like, hey, what do you guys think? We're talking about um, the origin of this. These five characters from Aztec tradition. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, that, yeah, that was that fun. Was... I had fun going into that. <laughs> you know, somebody pointed out. I was that the five Tom hormone Petty... users. That was me. Oh, you were. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, shit, that blew my mind. Yeah. I wasn't even. I was like, wait. And one of them was a girl. Yep. So yeah, that's yeah. that's how so I, my mind exactly... works. I was like 100 percent on that. I love it. That was exactly like, and they were they were supposed to uh, protect the sun, and yeah, it was uh, five five characters: one woman, one, one bearded beard. man at the yeah. center, at the center, and then the other ones were on the on the points of the different directions. And who knows if he did that on purpose? Yeah, but you know, come it's, on, it's just so beautiful the connections you can tie in. <laughs> They're fighting the pillar men, right? Yeah. They're fighting the pillar men. It's Mexico, uh, Hamon users. Yeah, <laughs> it's just the coincidence is uncanny. It's it's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah, but that's that's JoJo power for you. I don't know. Yep. <laughs> Even history is a JoJo reference. So yeah. So <laughs> aside from your Twitter, so Jesus. rice. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Jesus. Jesus is like the first JoJo allegedly. You know, yeah. we got the letters in. So, <laughs> sure. um, so yeah. So rice pirate on Twitter. Where else? I mean, Blood Sun Vendetta's own website, right? It's rice pirate Mick on Twitter. Okay. Uh, Blood Sun Vendetta is actually on rice pirate. Duck. Okay. I think I bought a domain like Blood Sun. Dot something i think i bought one of those domains but if you just go to ricepower.com that's all there you go cool right on and uh youtube same just look up rice pirate i mean that's pretty much the safe way to find you is just look up rice pirate otherwise i think it's i think my username is like y capital h six hyphen g s yeah you you know you guys remember it you know you have to and and so i guess this is also an important little origin question why rice pirate what's the origin behind the name uh, I'm half Chinese, yeah. and my name in Chinese is Mi Te, which translates rice and gram. Okay. Uh, I don't think it's supposed to be directly translated. But then um, I was also into Puzzle Pirates okay. for uh, a chunk of time. And so, you know, it was, you know what it was? It was descriptor and, and noun. You yep, know, that's the ultimate noun. way. Like, even though rice... Rice isn't an adjective. It is like now. Descriptor. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very ricey thing to say. That actually sounds racist as F. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, you know, I think at the time. It was if you racist. Went back, they were, yeah, it's racist. <laughs> hey. Nice. Thank you. Nice rice. <laughs> rice work. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. man. <laughs> I've been even derailed by a pun. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I am, I'm highly susceptible to puns. Yes, yeah, so we've now discovered your weaknesses. So for those, <laughs> <laughs> that's in your character sheet. You yeah, know? yeah. A, a Rocky, your, uh... your Rocky character yep. sheet likes puns. Yeah, <laughs> weakness. You, know, you have to mention that at some point. Yeah, yeah, it comes up in the little little minutia of the character. Yeah. Very cool, man. Uh, and any other stuff you want to promote? I mean, while you, you know, while you got the floor. Ah, I, I mean, I've. Uh, I'll be doing some cons this this year, I think. Um, Here we are in 2020. I don't know when you're watching this. Yeah, this could be a exactly. five years from now. Who knows? <laughs> exactly. Uh, if anybody, you know, if you want me to show up at your con, you can always let them know. I think that's how it works. I think you yeah. just at them. If you at them enough or something, if you write your congressman, I, I don't yeah, yeah. know how that, how that works. Uh, but, yeah, uh, if you want that, let them know. Um, I'm definitely down to travel and, and meet more JoJo fans. I, oh, yeah. I spent so long, I spent so many years feeling like I was isolated in terms of, you know, my love and poor, poor cocky JoJo had <laughs> for me. And, um, you know, coming now, seeing that it's uh, it, now that it's gaining traction here in the West and, and kind of all over, obviously, with the animes and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Great work DP is doing. D- David Productions is killing it. Um, it <laughs> they really so are. Amazing. Yeah, no killing it like i i don't know if anybody could do it better it's just that's why they keep getting it that they keep getting the the contract because they're on yeah on every level man i mean the sound design yeah oof oof. ah it's just it's so good but i'm just so happy that finally after 30 years i'm seeing like so many fans and and i knew it was something special when i was a kid um but it's just awesome to see that you know everyone's picking up i think iraqi was ahead of his time in a lot of ways very cool yeah, I agree with you, man. Um, so I guess just to wrap things up, I've got some JoJo rapid fire questions for you. Uh oh. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you, you were given only a slight warning about what they might be. So I hope you have yeah. answers off the top of your head. But your favorite. I do. I will know, try. Good. <laughs> favorite right, JoJo go. part. Number one. Favorite JoJo part. 
two, four, seven, and five because I'm in it. <laughs> there you go. Cool. Favorite right. JoJo? Joseph. Joseph. We saw his whole we saw his whole, whole life, life play yeah. out. How can we not? Fa- yeah. Favorite Joe Bro. I this one I didn't know how to answer. Um I, I don't think as far as standouts, you know, I'm gonna say gyro. Good choice. That's my pick. All right, we did it. <laughs> we made it. Yeah. I feel like he's the one that stands because a lot of them are great, but he's yeah. the one who to me stands out. And again, he's equally as steals important. The show. Yeah, like he's he's I think he steals steel ball run. When people tell me what's your ask me who's your favorite JoJo, I say Gyro Zeppelin. Like I just usually yeah. say that just to Yeah. Yeah, you know, he 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 really did it. Yeah, yeah, man. Okay, cool. Favorite JoJo antagonist. This does not have to be the main one. It could just be any, but answer however you yeah. like. Um, I would say Dio in terms because he's just family with us. <laughs> yeah, we know yeah, him. Yeah. But he's been around. I'd say Kira, I like a lot. I think he he definitely stands out from the others because his is just his story is so original. The irony uh, of standing out. <laughs> yeah. And his motives, you know, yeah. his motives are just so different from the others. Yeah, absolutely. Um But as far as antagonists, <laughs> I always wanted to see more of Risotto. Yeah. That was always my favorite. I, I'm, um, I know the anime yeah. gave us. Yeah, the, the new more. scenes were terrific. You know, all the, all the La Squadra awesome. new stuff has been awesome. Yeah, I'm a prosciutto I, fan I myself. Yeah. I know it's. I know like, a lot of all of the them. Prosciutto. All of them, man. Yeah, I would actually like to see that group's adventure. I would much. Like, yeah, like that would enjoy be so that. Fun. Give me some. Give me yeah. some one shots, Iraqi. I would love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, favorite stand. Uh, design wise, I can't give you an answer. There's too many. Um. I really like Heaven's Door just because mm-hmm. of the possibilities. Yeah, I yeah, feel very like cool. So many untapped things that could have happened. I mean, you could argue the hand is similar, but yeah, yeah. I just think Heaven's Door could have done anything. Honestly. Truly, yeah. Um, as far as personality for his hand, I think it was part three. Um, I know both of those are part four. It's kind of cheap, but uh, it's just hard for me to. I don't really have favorites. It so cut out for a like, second. What was the What was the second one? Oh, sorry. What was the your... second one? Was Echoes uh, the three. Second one was Echoes Act Three. Gotcha. Yeah, for the personality. Yeah. And I was just saying that, like, there are so many stands that I love that I that it. The only thing I can do is I can't say which one's my favorite, but I can say that Echoes Act Three I think has some of the most personality. As Absolutely. A stand. Spice Girl does too. Spice Girl also has. Yeah, kind yeah. Of, she's kind of the Echoes Act Three of Part Five. Um, but then you know Heaven's Door. I really like the possibilities. What can they do with this? You know what. What things didn't they do with it that I wish right. that I could have seen them do with it, you know? Um, but other than that, I mean, I have so many. All right, and uh, the last one of the list I've warned you about is favorite battle cry. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna say Brunos. Arriva Derechi. I like Ari 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 Yeah, man. Yeah, that's. I, it's literally goodbye <laughs> as he's kicking your yeah, ass. Yeah, it's fantastic. No, I I agree. It's that's. Just a, it's a great finisher, you know. It's it's great. it's it's not nonsensical. Like it's not just noise. It's actually a it's word. Not just a sound. Yeah. It's a guy with a really aggressive stutter when he's angry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. He really wants you to hear him. He really wants you to understand this yes. point. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and one that I did not send you, but favorite JoJo game. Um, there was an RPG that I played a long time. I think it was on Super Nintendo. Was it part three? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the only one that I know of in that era. And it's, I guess it was like a Super Famicom. Yeah. And that was, I, at the time I was playing a lot of RPGs. Yeah. I mean, that was like Final Fantasy. It was the era. Three or six, whatever you want to call it. That was the era. And so... I think that one just left an impression on me. I don't remember all of it, but I just remember being like, oh, yeah, this, yeah, this is interesting. This is cool. Um, but I just haven't played. I'm not a big fighter game guy. Sure. You know? And I I did have Eyes of Heaven. Is that what it's called? Eyes of the Heaven? most recent one? for That yeah. was on PS4? Yeah. That was Eyes of Heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I had a demo of that. Okay. And it just, I don't know. It, the thing about JoJo isn't, the punching and no. the running around and chasing it's the outsmarting and the the twists and the turns and the personalities sure, of the characters yeah. when you boil when you boil jojo down to you know 
just the it, like a catchphrase. Mm -hmm. I know they did a lot of voiceovers for that game, by the way. There's thousands yeah. of voice. Well, and, and I mean that's also got a lot to do with the single player campaign, the story. Right. That was right. that alone is what I like that game. I, the, oh, I didn't get to play the game. Yeah, I guess, no, I it's think the demo has the campaign. No, it's it's uh it's an entire AU in which um, Dio of another universe did win. And, oh. and so he wants to make sure he asserts his dominance across all universes. So, <laughs> well, yeah, I maybe, think... <laughs> maybe I will check yeah, that out. It's, yeah, it was such a good... Like, it was honestly... It's 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 pure fanfix bait. Like, it's super cool. Um, all the JoJo's take part in some capacity. I mean, it's... Yeah, they seem to have given in to the fan fiction side of stuff. Where yeah. they're just like, yeah, and then we're in an alternate universe and everybody's yeah. there. Let's go. It's yeah. like, okay, I mean... It's not totally unheard of. Yeah, you know? I definitely, you know, the gameplay needs whatever, but the actual yeah. experience of that, that, I was in, I would have read that. I would have watched that. It was just, it was so great to yeah. have, that, since you mentioned Eyes of Heaven, I'll tell you it's one great yeah. strength was that okay. story. I mean, listen, any more JoJo, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, the, the Rohan's Tales or, yeah. you know, or so, what was it? So says Yeah, Rohan, Thus Spoke or, Rohan Kishibe. Thus Spoke Rohan, um, and uh, there was also that uh, the uh, dead man's ghost. questions. Yeah, that's yep. right. Um, any, anything that's more JoJo is always yeah. fun to to ingest. And so, if this is basically like watching some alternate reality version, like in, just an extra it, yep. part, like, yeah, it is. Then Enjoy. I would love. To. Yeah, yeah. Check it out. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what? Man. I might go. I might go on YouTube and just watch. Do you do a playthrough? I, uh, you know, I did not do one for uh, for Eyes of Heaven. Part, mostly because uh, they've made it very much a, a thing not to record. Almost every scene in that game, the whole like recording has been disabled. Yeah. For so I mean, I could use a okay. capture card, but when I played through it, I didn't have it like hooked up for that. I just wanted to experience yeah. the game, and I mean, it's yeah. fully voiced with all of, you know the actors you'd expect from the anime plus the parts that didn't have actors yet. So oh, you know, yeah. it's it's definitely worth checking out. I'm sure it exists, but uh, if I record it, I'll send it to you. But uh, I'm definitely gonna check it out. Yeah, now. man, it's now it I'm was very it was I really had a lot of fun with it, and it really it pays homage to all these different parts in and characters and thing. I'll let you experience. I won't talk about it. All but, right, uh, I'm excited. Yeah, man, look forward to that. Well, it has been an absolute treat to have you uh, and to to hear all of this stuff about Blood Sun Vendetta and just you and JoJo and everything. This is this has been a lot of fun for me. So I appreciate you being here, man. I appreciate you taking the time and and being interested and in helping me share the project as well <laughs> well you certainly deserve the platform so um, ah. <laughs> there you go so i mean with that said uh this has been stand by here with rice pirate the man the legend you whether you know him for for dubbing or for just online content i mean it's it's good you know it's gonna be good so you know say stay subscribed to him and thanks for hyping <laughs> oh thanks for the hype dude it's just cool. raising the bar yeah, yeah i'll yeah. keep going <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we won't stop. We'll reach the top. But in any case, right. thank you so much for being here. Thank you all who are watching this. And you know he loves comments. I always say I love to read the comments too. So you got two people who really care about your comments. Please leave them in this chat. You know people are going to naturally read them and respond to them as we always do. So be sure to leave those comments. And thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. Check out the other interviews here on the channel. And of course, be sure to follow our man Rice Pirate here wherever he is available online. I'll see you guys next time. Any closing words, thank Mick? Thank you. Uh, thank you, guys. Have a great one, and keep keep JoJo in. <laughs> All right. Until next time, arri arri arrivederci. We'll see you. <laughs>